Well, hello, friends. Welcome to 2024 Daily Connection. It took us a little while to get started. The end of the year was very frantic. Things just got a little bit out of hand. So sorry for the delay, but I'm glad you've remained faithful. We're reading at a much faster pace. A lot more material we're covering every day. So as far as the Daily Connection goes, we're going to try to focus on inspiring you, encouraging you, because you can easily get discouraged if you get behind a little bit. Uh, you can quit, and that's not what we want. We want to stay focused. We want to stay committed. We want to get through the whole entire Bible in a chronological fashion in one year. And in that, we're going to rest in Him. Of course, that's our theme for the year, to rest in Him. So today we're looking at the life of Joseph. We started yesterday in chapter 37. We looked at the early years of Joseph's life, uh, the promise that God made to him. Now we're coming to a point where he's much older. Uh, in fact, we're going to see today he's 30 now. Uh, a lot of water has gone under the bridge, uh, figuratively speaking. And we now find Joseph where he thought he would have been probably, if I'm Joseph, I thought I'd been there a lot earlier, right before Pharaoh, and, and, or in a position of leadership. And so Joseph, through the cupbearer, has now come to Pharaoh. Pharaoh has given him uh, a dream. Joseph has interpreted that dream. A couple of verses I want to look at, and we're going to be kind of hitting spots here. Look at verse 26 to begin with, or excuse me, verse 25 to begin with. It says, Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's dreams mean the same thing. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. Now, what's fascinating about that is that Pharaoh considered himself to be a god. The person in the position of Pharaoh was considered to be as a god to the people. They were very polytheistic. They had many gods representing many things. And so for Pharaoh to hear this phrase had to be very humbling for him to understand that him as a god is now being dictated by someone greater than him. And that's what Joseph is saying. Joseph is saying, one greater than you is revealing what he is about to do, and you, Pharaoh, can do nothing to change it. In fact, he comes back a little bit later on in verse 28. It's just as I told you, Pharaoh, God has shown you what he is about to do. And he goes on to describe it, how there's going to be seven years of abundance, there's going to be seven years of famine. You must, you, and you know, what's fascinating is that Joseph then gives great counsel how in the years of abundance, you need to kind of store it up. You need to make sure you're, you're, you're managing it well and you're creating a vast uh, supply of resources because when the seven years of famine come, then there's going to be just that. It is going to be intense and it's going to be widespread. Uh, we don't know if it was global or not, but it was certainly regional in terms of it affected all the way up back into the promised land because his brothers will come down later on seeking supplies. And so yet again, though, the phrase, God is about to do. Then you come down to verse 32. Since the dream was given twice to Pharaoh, it means that the matter has been determined by God. He will carry it out soon. Friends, Pharaoh is hearing that one greater than him is about to unleash a power that he can't stop. He can't adjust it. He can't make any tweet. And there's nothing he can do except respond to it. How humbling. And he says specifically, God is about to do. Well, why do you say that's important? Well, it's important because he keeps using the term Elohim, God, what God is about to do, Elohim. Because like I said, Pharaoh's polytheistic, and so they saw gods in many ways and in, in, in forms in nature and in creation. And so here he keeps saying, God, God, and now coming down to verse 37, listen to what Pharaoh says. Now this proposal pleased Pharaoh and all his servants, and he said to them, Can we find anyone like this man, a man who has God's spirit in him? So now here's Pharaoh speaking, uh, referencing God. He's polytheistic, and of course he probably just lumped God into this large pool of gods. But he's specifically identifying Elohim here, God, and in terms of the Spirit of God being actively involved in the life of Joseph. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you, that means that there's a wisdom and there's an understanding and discernment that's given to Joseph that's greater than what even Pharaoh and all of his musicians and interpreters had. There's no one as discerning and as wise as you. You'll be over my house. All my people will obey your commands. Only I as king will be greater than you. He told Joseph, I am placing you over all the land of Egypt. He removed his signet ring from his hand. He put it on Joseph's hand, which represented his authority to make decisions and binding agreements. He clothed him with fine linen garments, placed a gold chain around his neck, which demonstrated a position of authority and rulership. He had Joseph ride in his second chariot, and servants called out before him, Make way. So he placed him over all the land of Egypt. Wow. Not even, a, you know, and he goes on to say more, but 
just look at what's going on here. Yeah, Joseph is the focus of what's happening, but ultimately it's God working to bring about his will and accomplish his sovereign purpose, despite and in spite of Pharaoh. Man, what a fascinating thing. And here's one thing we remember, verse 46. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, that's pretty impressive when you consider in that day and time, you really weren't thought to be wise and discerning until you got closer to 40 and older. Then it was thought that you'd lived enough life, you had you know, consumed enough information that you were very wise, you could make great decisions. And yet here's Joseph, because of how God has gifted him to interpret these dreams and then to provide counsel, being elevated to the second highest position of authority in all the land of Egypt. And Egypt at that point was growing in its influence and its power. That just shows you that God is God has determined all this. God has designed his plan and now he is implementing this plan perfectly because there's a greater purpose to be had here. It's not just to elevate Joseph to a, a position of authority. No, there's a greater purpose to be had and we'll see that tomorrow as, as David leads us through the next set of verses. But let this remind us that God is sovereign. And although things may not be going like we think they should, because let's remember it was only a short time earlier that Joseph was in, in, in prison. You know, granted, he'd been given a position of authority in prison, but he was still in prison. He was not before Pharaoh. He was certainly not the second in command. And yet God in his sovereign will was working out his plan perfectly. And you may be discouraged. You may be doubting God right now regarding what's going on in your life. Friend, trust in the Lord. It all goes back to our rest. We've got to remember who he is. We've got to engage him continually in prayer. We've got to trust him and provide our every need in Christ. And then we've got to, you know, we've got to seek him with all our heart. We've got to rest in Him. And that's what 2024 is all about. And one of the reasons why we can rest in God is because He's sovereign and He works out His perfect plan regardless of what we think is, should be happening and when it should be happening. God's plans are perfect. Well, I hope God's Word today inspires you to trust Him even more and understand that He, he, does, he loves us and He is carrying out His perfect plan for our good and His glory. Well, love your friends. We've started the year off well. Let's stay committed and let's stay focused as we go out today to live sent.